Hello and welcome to part 20 of the video series in the Blender game engine. In this video I'll be showing you how to create a camera setup that will allow a camera to follow quite nicely a character moving around in a 3D game or a 3D platformer. Uh, this is going to be a more advanced setup of course than just simply parenting a camera to a character. Uh, it'll be more advanced than that. Uh, partially because the camera will not rotate with the character, it'll just follow the character around nicely. Um, and we'll also be giving the user or the player of the game the capability of rotating the camera around the character in a 3D platformer. Very similar to the uh, game Super Mario 64, one of my favorite games of all time. In that game you can use the yellow C buttons on the N64 controller to rotate your camera around Mario depending on which is the best uh, view for what you're doing in that 3D level at that time. And we'll also be allowing the user to uh, press a button on their keyboard to change cameras in their scene to a close-up or over-the-shoulder uh, camera or zoom out or get a quite a wide-angle shot depending on what suits that part of the level at any given time. Let's go ahead and jump in to look at this exact file. In fact, you can actually download this exact Blender file in the description area below on YouTube. If you go down there, you'll find a download link for that. You can follow along exactly with this video. Also there, you'll find links to my social media pages, my Twitter page, my Facebook page at facebook.com slash bornCG. Uh, please go ahead and check that out. And if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, uh, for more tutorials like this, you can go ahead and click on subscribe and you'll get more tutorials like this in Blender and in tech. Now this file already has a character that you can control with the WASD keys on your keyboard as well as the spacebar. If I go ahead and press P with my mouse in this window, of course the game starts to play. If I go ahead and press P on my keyboard, of course the game starts to play and I can use the W key to move forward and the A and D keys to rotate left and right. So I can move my character around, I can use a spacebar to jump and all that works great. So presumably um, the point of this game would be to get up to the top of these uh, purple blocks. Um, so that you could get to the top platform just up here, I'm not doing very well. And that would presumably get you to a transport site to go to the next level in the game. That's not set up yet, but that's okay. Down here with my character selected, I have got some logic bricks. I have sensors and controllers and actuators to recognize the WASD keys and the space bar. Actually, there's no S as well as move and rotate and jump. If you're not sure how to create any of this, I'll put a link or actually a card up in the top right corner of this video. Uh, that If you click on that or tap on that, you'll see a link to this tutorial series in the Blender Game Engine. I already covered a lot of this before. Let's go ahead and start creating our camera setup. Now, actually, when we create our camera, we're not parenting it directly to our character in this case. Uh, this blue monkey head. Um, we're going to be actually creating an arm that will be invisible that will be coming out the back of the character and that arm will be able to swing around the character depending on where you want the camera to be pointing to and we're going to be parenting a camera to that arm. So right now I'll select my monkey head and by the way you might notice something funny about this file that it has two layers right here. If I click on this top layer you'll notice that everything kind of goes dark because the lamp as well as the character, the monkey head, are in this other bottom layer. And of course I can hold shift and click to select both of them. And the reason I've done that is because in the sun lamps properties, um, I've selected shadows for this layer only, which means that only the object in the same layer as this lamp will cast a shadow. So in this case, only the monkey head will cast a shadow and not the poles. I just found that when you're rotating your camera, sometimes the Blender game engine is glitchy and shadows don't render properly if you have a lot of things having shadows and you would probably uh, bake shadows uh, for anything that's static in your scene anyways. Let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, character because we're going to add in the same location as this character a arm. So I'm going to actually put my 3D cursor where this blue monkey head is uh, and to do that, I'm going to press Shift S on my keyboard. That will bring up my snap menu because I want this 3D cursor to go right to the middle of the monkey head. And then I'll say cursor to select and that'll put the 3D cursor right in the middle of the monkey head or right where the origin of the monkey head is. I'll press Shift A. I'm going to add a mesh cube. I'm going to press S to make it smaller, to just make it kind of a, a small cube in the middle of the monkey head. But if I press a Z on my keyboard to go into wireframe, and then I'll press tab to go into edit mode, I'm going to drag the back face right there. If you go in back into solid view, you can see that I'm selecting the back face. I'm going to just drag that back face 
uh, quite a bit far back. It actually doesn't matter how far back it is, but just so we can see it. And so now if I go back into solid view with the Z key, you can see what I have here. The cube is still, or at least the origin of the cube is still in the exact same spot as the monkey head, but it has an extending arm out the back. Let's go ahead and select that arm and then hold shift and right click and select the monkey head because we're going to parent uh, with control P the arm to the monkey head, so control P and set parent to object. So now if the monkey head moves around, its child, the arm will move around as well. At this point, let's go ahead and add a camera to our scene. So I'll press shift A. I'm gonna add with the shift A add menu, a camera and cameras by default have a rotation. So I'll press uh, alt R with that camera selected. I'll go to my side view so you can see that. Now the default view for the camera, I'll press G to move this camera, will be sort of a mid distance camera. And so maybe I'll press R to put it right there. And if I press zero on my uh, keyboard or number pad, uh, it'll go through that camera. Um, I don't quite like the way this is, but I'm going to collapse the side panels and I'll duplicate this window. I'll just grab this little triangle area and drag it over so I have two windows now. Um, I'll look through the side view so I can move this camera away and watch it over here. So until I get the camera angle that I want, be right about there. And now I have to parent this camera to this arm. So that's simple. Select the child first, hold shift, select the parent, which is the arm, and press control P and set parent to object. So now if I play my game in this window uh, through the camera's view, I press P, oops. Actually, when you're looking at your scene um, and your uh, render mode or your viewport shading is set to GLSL, you need to change your viewport shading to material, otherwise everything will be white. So if I press P now, <laughs> we're getting a lot of glitching. And that's because this arm has a physics type of static, which means it will collide with other objects like our character. So I'm going to select the arm, go to the physics tab, and change physics type to no collision. So now it will not collide and make things bounce around. So if I play my game, uh, if I press P in this window over here, there we go. Um, I can move around. Now the problem with this setup, and if you like this setup, you can keep it, is that when I move around, if I rotate my character, the camera always stays at the character's back. And that might be good um, for what you want, but what I want to create is a situation where my camera only follows the movement of the character and not the rotation of the character. So this might be appropriate for other kind of top-down games um, or 3D platformers like this. So to stop this arm from rotating with the character, I'm actually just gonna give it the reverse controls of my character. If I select the character, I look at its logic bricks, I have A and D keys set up to rotate the character, and those are connected through, and controllers to rotate left with character motion at two degrees for the A key, and to negative two for the D key. So on this, arm, I'm going to add uh, the same keys as well. So we'll add a keyboard, uh, click there and type A, and I'll name this logic brick A as well. I'll add another one, keyboard, and the key is going to be D, and I'll name this logic brick D, and I can collapse those now. We're going to have those um, do the exact opposite motions that the character does to kind of counterbalance that. So we're going to add in some motion. They're going to be character motion. Uh, that shouldn't really matter, but I'm just keeping this consistent with how I did it before. And motion again, and character motion. Now I believe the order was two and negative two, so in this case I'm gonna, under the rotation, I'll do negative two and two, and I'll connect those up. So when you press A, it'll rotate negative two and D two. If I go ahead and test this out, if I press P, and if I've done this right, yes, the arm is now staying still even though the character is moving around. I can go in either direction. So if that's what you want uh, for your game, and this could be done with more of a top-down view, I know I had at least one person ask me in the comment section in one of my previous videos uh, how to do this, um, then you have what you want. But I want to actually make it so that the player can control the direction of this arm. So the player with a different set of keys, in this case I'll use my arrow keys, can actually swing this arm around in set increments so you can change your view of your game. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So with that arm selected, I'm going to add a few more keyboard sensors. Um, I'm going to add a keyboard sensor and we're going to use the arrow keys. In this case I'm just going to use left and right. So I'll use left arrow and I'll name this left arrow. And 
and I'll collapse that and keyboard right so I can type this right arrow and I'll enable the right arrow key there I'll go ahead and collapse these I'm going to name these though um, this is keep still um, that is uh, left and keep still right and those are the uh, two rotations that keep the arm still when the character is rotating that's why I named those keep still left and keep still right we're going to use the right arrow key and the left arrow key to rotate this in a set increment um, so let's go ahead and add some motion logic bricks and I'll connect those up and we're just going to have it rotate using simple motion um, I'm going to have the rotation change, um, maybe add an increment of 15, so I'm, gonna, I'm not sure if it's going to be negative 15 or 15 depending on what key you press, but I can always change those. Um, what I do care about though is having to tap these keys, not just hold down your left and right arrows to rotate the camera smoothly, I want to kind of, kind of click along and not be, um, and be kind of a set increment of where you can rotate the camera to. Um, so I'm going to enable tap for both left arrow and right arrow and I believe if you change the trigger true level um, the three little dots, the first three little dots on each and I'm going to change this to maybe a five skip and a five skip for both and a tap for both of course um, then hopefully we'll be able to not rotate the camera smoothly but only in increments. Let's go ahead and try to see if this works. So if I press uh, P to play my game and I press the arrow keys um, I have them going in the wrong direction. I'm pressing right right now and it's rotating left and left is rotating right. But as you can see now, if I press forward or the uh, W key on my keyboard, um, I'm able to move and I can move the camera independently of my character's movement. There are some artifacts. I'm not sure why that's happening uh, with the shadows. Um, oh, you know why that's happening? Because we have the arm still visible. Don't worry, we'll make the arm invisible. That arm, if I just click onto the physics tab, invisible, we won't be able to see it anymore. If you've been wondering that, uh, don't worry about that at all. I'm still getting some artifacts with um, shadows. And I'm not sure why that's happening. Maybe I have to play around with what is on what layer. Uh, but let's go ahead and keep on moving. I'm going to switch these two rotations to negative 15 and 15 degrees. Let's go ahead and see if that arm is in which layer. This arm, if I look, it is in the top layer, so it should not get a shadow, even though it's invisible. That's great. And this other layer, I only have the monkey head and the um, uh, sun lamp. That's great. So I'm not exactly sure why that's happening. I could troubleshoot that after I finish recording this video. Uh, but of course, the solution might be also to just turn off shadows entirely in your scene. Uh, it's up to you or depending on what kind of lamp you want to use in this camp case, I'm using a sun lamp. So right now, if I press P to play my game, I can uh, rotate my character around. I can move around. The camera follows it nicely. I can use the arrow key on my keyboard to rotate the camera independently of the character's movement. The last thing I want to add is uh, different cameras in my scene or a different uh, view for the camera depending on what key you press. In this case, I'm going to use the up arrow key on my keyboard to switch between different cameras. And we're not going to make this camera move. We're actually just going to switch between different preset cameras that we uh, make. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go to my side view, I'll press 3, and I'm going to select this camera and duplicate it. I'll press Shift D on my keyboard, Shift D uh, duplicates objects. I'm going to put this camera over the uh, character's shoulder. Uh, with this camera selected, I'm going to go to View and Cameras, and I'm going to set this active object, the object I've selected, to my active camera. So now I can look through that camera. If I press 0 over here now, uh, it'll go to that camera and now I can see from the side view uh, that's too close so I'll zoom out a little bit and maybe I'll rotate it up and put the camera a bit farther down. Don't worry about the arm, the arm won't chop in the game. Uh, maybe I'll put that a little bit more like this. So if I want more of an over the shoulder shot I can have that. I'm going to name these cameras now so I'm going to select this camera and under the object tab, not the camera tab where you can give the camera a name, but under the object tab I'm going to call this camera C1 and then I'm going to name the over the shoulder camera C0 and you're going to see in a moment that these are actually going to correspond with property values 
um, that we're going to set to keep track of what camera is the active camera in our scene. I'm going to duplicate this camera one more time, so I'll press Shift D with it selected, and I'll make this the wide or far camera, and with that camera selected, in fact, I'll break out of the camera uh, in this uh, window, and I'll select that camera, I'll go to View, and Cameras, and set Active Object as Camera. Um, I want my camera to be a bit wider than that, so I'll go to my side view over here, and move it far away, maybe rotate it a little bit. Perfect, let's name this camera. It's gonna be uh, C2 under the Cube tab. Great. Now we're actually gonna put the logic of how to switch between these three cameras, C0, C1, and C2, um, on the arm object. That seems to make the most sense. So I'm gonna collapse all the rest of my logic bricks. I'm actually gonna make a property now to keep track of what camera I'm on. The properties panel is of course the little side panel in the logic brick editor window. I'll click on this little plus to open it up. With the uh, arm selected, I'll go to add game property. We're gonna add a new property called Zoom, and you can name it anything you like without spaces or anything fancy at the beginning, like don't put a question mark at the beginning. And the type of property is gonna be an integer. That means they're just a number, like one, two, three, or four. It cannot have decimals. That's a property of an integer. It has to be a whole number. I'm gonna make the property one by default because by default, I wanna start off at the one camera. Now, with the arm selected, I'm gonna add a keyboard sensor and we're gonna to test to see if I'm pressing the up arrow on my keyboard. So I'm gonna type in up arrow as that brick's name, and I'm gonna give it a tap um, so value so you could have to keep on pressing it. You can't just hold it down to, to toggle through the different cameras. And I'll collapse that. What I wanna actually do now is test to see what the value of this uh, property is. Right now it's one, so I'm gonna add a sensor for a property value, the property is called zoom, and the value I want to test to see if it's equal to is one. So now, I'm gonna add an and controller, and if the user presses the up arrow on their keyboard, and the property zoom is equal to one, we know that we're at that camera, and we can switch to the next camera. In this case, I'm gonna switch to the number two camera. So I'm gonna select the arm again, and what I wanna do, is when those two things are true, I'm going to uh, use the scene uh, actuator. I'll connect that up. The scene actuator is how you can actually set the camera in your scene. In this case, I'm gonna select, uh, I'm at one right now, I'm gonna go out to the zoom out camera, uh, the wide far camera, which is called C2. Notice how it uses object names and not camera names here. Great, now in order for us to know that we've actually switched cameras is we have to actually change this property as well to two. So I'm gonna add an actuator, it'll be a property actuator and I'll connect that up. We're gonna assign to zoom the value two. So now the next time we press the up arrow key on our keyboard, it'll know that we're at two and we're gonna program that right now. So I'm gonna go back over here. In fact, I might collapse this side panel so you can see things a bit better. We're going to use the same up arrow block. And I'm gonna say if, um, if zoom is equal to one, uh, if you're a programmer, you'll know why I use the two equal signs there. Uh, that's just a little bit of programming for you. Let's go ahead and add another a property sensor. And this one's gonna be called if zoom is equal to two. If zoom is equal to two, then what I wanna do is switch to zoom being equal to zero. So we'll go from the, the number two camera back to zero and we'll cycle through that way. So with the arm selected, if zoom is equal to two, and I'm gonna add a new and controller, and we're gonna connect up if zoom is equal to two and if the user presses their up arrow. So again, we can reuse this logic brick as many times as we want. If that and that is true, we wanna to switch to camera zero. So I'm gonna collapse these ones. I'm gonna say switch to two. We're gonna add a new scene actuator as well as a new property actuator. Uh, with the scene actuator, we're going to set the camera to C0, and we're gonna assign the zoom property to zero as well. I hope you see where we're going with this. Every time we switch cameras, we have to test to see uh, if they're pressing up their up arrow on their keyboard and what the property value is. Uh, it'll be one or zero or two, and we're gonna cycle through. So we're gonna do this process one more time. 
um, I'm gonna reuse this up arrow, but I wanna see if my property is now e equal to zero. So I'm gonna add a new sensor. It's gonna be a property sensor. I'm gonna say if zoom is equal to zero, that's just a name again. We're gonna see if zoom is equal to zero. And if it is, so I'm gonna add a controller. It's gonna be an and controller again. If that is true, and the user presses the up arrow on their keyboard, then we can change the camera and we can set the property to uh, one because we're going to switch to the, the one camera. So I'll use the scene um, actuator right there. We'll connect that up. We're going to set the camera to C1 and we're going to set the property uh, zoom to one as well. Hopefully you follow along with that. What I'll do is I'll actually expand this window out and I'll take a screenshot and I'll post it to my Facebook page. Again, at facebook.com slash borncg. You can take a look at that as soon as you watch this video um, and see these logic bricks all in a high quality JPEG on Facebook. Let's go ahead and see if this all works. I'll make the window up here uh, bigger so we can see what's going on. And I'll press P to play my game. In fact, I want to make sure that my camera by default is set to the first camera. So I'm going to select that camera and view and cameras and set active object as camera. So now we're looking through camera one. And I'll press P to play my game. If I press the up arrow on my keyboard, I'm going to jump back to the farther camera. Press up again, I should go to the close-up camera. And I can toggle through to my heart's content. And this will work exactly the same no matter what camera I'm on. If I'm in the far away camera, um, I can use my D or my right arrow, my left arrow, pardon me, my keyboard to rotate that camera around. And if I zoom in with the up arrow on my keyboard, I can still move around and it'll follow along with me. If I use the arrow keys, I can rotate around. And this is exactly the camera setup that I want to make the closest possible camera setup that I can to Super Mario 64. And that will be it for this video. Please don't forget to like this video if you learned something and subscribe to this channel to see more videos like this one. Check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash borncg. And that will be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.